Hey everybody, The Rookie here, and welcome back to some Elite Dangerous. I got something a little different for you today. I'm going to do a ship review of one of my favorite ships in the game, and in my opinion, the best mid-tier combat ship that money can buy, and that is the Vulture. Now, by mid-tier, uh, I mean I split the ships up in this game up into three categories. Low tier being your early ships, such as your Eagle and your Adder, and they normally cost about $1.5 million or less. Mid-tier, such as the Great Vulture here, um, will put you back probably between 5 to $20 million. So they're kind of that mid-range, you got to work a little bit to get them. And then your uh, high-tier ships, such as your Anaconda and your Clipper, which cost hundreds of millions of dollars to purchase, and then hundreds of million dollars more than that to completely upgrade. So this one sits right in the middle. Uh, go through a few stats here at the start, and then I'll show you my loadout. And we'll go ahead and put this thing through its paces in a hazardous resource extraction site. So the base cost of this ship is 5 million credits, which is not bad at all. That's about 3, maybe 4 hours of um, bounty hunting or trading, and you can afford the ship, so that's not bad at all. Uh, fully kitted out in A-rated equipment, you're probably looking between 20 to $25 million, depending on kind of what you want to use it for. Uh, we'll go through some of the weaknesses of the ship. Uh, the main one being its power plant. So this ship uh, has two large hard points for weapons. It's the only small ship in the game that has this. And with that, uh, they use a lot of power. And it only has a class 4 power plant. So you will have to do some, some power management in order to get this thing to run once you get it all A-rated equipment in it. Uh, some of the strengths of this ship, uh, main one being its shields. Uh, the way I have it loaded out right now, which I will show you here in a second, you're getting about 436 megajoules worth of shields, which is a lot. It takes a long time for the shields on this ship to drop. And then once it does, another great part about the ship is its armor is fantastic. It takes a long time, even once your shields drop, for the enemies to take you down. So it gives you time to either finish them off or boost out of there and uh, go into super cruise and get away. So you're not going to die instantly when you're such as when you're in something like the Eagle where you get shot twice by a cannon and you're dead. Uh, another great thing about the ship is its boost speed is pretty good. Uh, you're getting about 390 to 395 meters per second in the boost, which puts it in probably around the top five, top six ships in the game in terms of boost speed, which is pretty darn good. So we'll go ahead to Spaceport Services, and I'll kind of show you the loadout I'm going with. So I primarily do bounty hunting and um, conflict zones, so that's what this ship is kitted out for. So as you can see right there, there's those uh, two large hard points I was talking to you about. I have mine uh, fitted out with pulse lasers, because I like to, once I get to either a uh, resource extraction site or a conflict zone, I don't like to leave, so I don't like anything with ammo. So multi-cannons, cannons, cannons uh, plasma accelerators, that kind of thing. Oh, pardon me. I don't like them. So with pulse lasers, I don't have to worry about ammo. I just keep blasting the enemy and have to release my trigger finger every once in a while to let the capacitor recharge, but other than that... Uh, I can stay as long as my health allows me to. Uh, I also have this thing equipped with two chaff launchers. I'll kind of show you what I'm doing with those. I do use them a lot, uh, especially if I'm taking on uh, in wings, so in um, resource extraction sites. So I'll engage one ship and then you use your chaff to keep the second guy off you until you can deal with the first one and then you can switch your attention, that kind of thing. I have a kill warrant scanner for obvious reasons. I'm in resource extraction sites and bounty hunting. So you just get that little extra money once you uh, scan them. And then I have one A-rated shield booster just to give me that little bit more power to my shields and make them even stronger than they already are. We'll jump over to the internal components. Now the only thing I have left to get on this ship are uh, military-grade alloys which this station doesn't have, and a, a uh, 5A shield booster. I haven't been able to find one of those yet. Uh, best I could find was a 5B. So other than those two things, the ship is equipped for 
combat in the way I like it. So we have a A-rated power plant, a 4A power plant, best you can get, which you're going to need. Um, 5A thrusters, uh, they're, you might not need these, you can probably get away with like 5B, 5C if you want to, because this ship does move around really, really well, but I just... I like the 5A because I use my thrusters a lot, especially fighting large ships like Anacondas and Clippers. I find I can most of the time take zero damage at all uh, while I'm killing them. I have a 4A frameshift drive for obvious reasons. I want to get the maximum jump range I can, which sits at 15.34, which isn't great, but it's also not bad. It's kind of in that mid-range, so it's pretty good for a uh, pure combat ship. Life support, I go for a 3C. I might even boost this up to maybe a 3E. Uh, when your shields do drop, because you can kind of see how the cockpit sits right there, if your shield drops and somebody shoots you from the front, your canopy is going to get damaged, and I have it shatter on me a lot. So depending on where you are, you might want to give yourself that little bit more time to get back to a station and repair it. Um, the 3C gives you 10 minutes. I believe the 3B will give you 15 and then the 3A will give you 20 minutes, so kind of play it how you want it. Uh, like I said, I can make it back right now, but I don't have a lot of time to spare, probably only like a minute or so, so I might even boost this up to a 3B at one point. Power distributor, as always, you want to go with the best one you can get, and this one's a 5A, and it works really well. Your weapons, you can fire them for a long time before you have to recharge your capacitor. Your engine... Uh, charges really fast as well and your shields uh, once you put four pips into them will stay up a long time if you need them to. Sensors, I go with a 4B. I like to have I like to be able to see what's out there. You could drop this down to a 4D if you wanted to. Uh, D being, uh, here we'll go, I'll show you. Oh, never mind, they don't have any. D is the uh, the lightest version of a sensor. So you would get more jump range out of it if you switched it over to a D, but like I said, I like to be able to see what's around me, so I go for a B. Fuel tank is the best you can get. Uh, shield generator, uh, 5B. Again, I haven't been able to find the, the 5A yet, so I will be upgrading this when I get a chance to. Uh, as it stands right now, it is pretty good. With the, this shield generator and my shield booster, I'm sitting at 436 megajoules and it takes a long time for the enemies to knock my shields down. Uh, because I do a lot of bounty hunting and uh, jumping from sh um, system to system looking for conflict zones and whatnot, I do have a nice fuel scoop on here. This fuel scoop I find works fantastic. It takes me all of maybe 15 to 30 seconds to refill my fuel tank depending on how often I jump, but from just about empty to just about full you're probably looking at 30 seconds. So this fuel scoop for this ship works fantastic. Frame shift drive interdictor, I, uh, I went for the 2B. Um, it works great. You don't really need anything better than this. If you wanted a 2A, you could probably throw one in if you're having some trouble with the interdiction, but I haven't had any problems whatsoever with this one. I went for the uh, intermittent discovery scanner because I do uh, tend to travel a lot, so I like to do uh, a scan just to kind of pick up any planets and maybe there's some missions on the planets that I can pick up. So that's why I have that one. Uh, in this spot I have a hull reinforcement package because uh, there was nothing else I needed in a one slot so a little bit more armor is always nice. And then your planetary approach suite because why not. Uh, if I do find that I've, I'm in a system and I'm going to spend a, a lot of time there and spend a lot of time in say like um, conflict zones your high intensity conflict zones, I will swap out my fuel scoop and my frame shift drive interdictor for more hull reinforcement packages just to give me that little extra resiliency because in conflict zones you will find yourself outnumbered a lot and you'll be taking on two to three ships at a time and if your shields go down you want the strongest hull you can get and that's kind of what I do. But for now, because I'm just doing mainly bounty hunting at the moment, I stick with this kind of setup. It's kind of a good all-round combat ship. And we'll exit. Gonna go over. Now we're gonna find a hazardous resource extraction site. Where are you? Right there. 
lock in the destination, and we're going to go give this thing a test run and see how she performs. Up we go. There we go. See if I can do this without crashing. I don't believe in the speed limits in these ports, and sometimes I pay for it. Not made it out this time. It's all good. So as you can see, the burst speed is pretty good. So we're going in a straight line. We hit boost. We're making it upwards of the 390s, which is pretty good. So yeah, we got to 390 that time. Not too bad. All right, so we are out of mass lock. I'm going to go ahead and super cruise, and I will see you guys once I get to the uh, resource extraction site. All right, welcome back. So here we are in a uh, hazardous resource extraction site. And before we go ahead and get started, I'll just kind of show you how I manage my power in this ship, because I had mentioned it before, that because of the power plant, can't really support the, uh, the large weapons, or has trouble. Uh, you'll have to... To mess around with it a bit and as you can see in mine so this ship for me is pure combat and I just got ran into which is always nice jerks uh, so I have no cargo on this ship I have zero capacity so the cargo hatch I can probably actually just turn right off there's no point in having it on and soaking up any of my power and the other ones a frame shift drive I turn that off when I'm in combat uh, my fuel scoop again no need in combat and my frame shift drive interdictor is off in combat and, and right here, I do have two chaff launchers. Like I said, I use them a lot, but only one is ever on at a time. I just put the second one on, so I basically have 20 uh, charges instead of 10. So when one is empty, I will simply go into it, turn it off, turn the other one on, and then I have uh, another fully loaded chaff launcher, and I, and it just helps me last in conflict zones and resource extraction sites that little bit more. Oop, get back there. Uh, my fire group setup is pretty basic. So my main fire group, I have my two pulse lasers on number one and my kill warrant scanner on number two so I don't have to switch groups in order to scan somebody. I can just scan them while I'm shooting them if I feel like it. Number two is where I have my pulse lasers and my two chaff launchers. So again, only one of these chaff launchers is on at a time. The other one I just turn off, so I hit the button once, and only the one will fire, so I'm not wasting chaff. And the second group is my super cruise, so that's where I have my uh, discovery scanner, oops, and my frame shift drive interdictor. So that's kind of a rundown on how I do things. Power plant capacity exceeded. And we'll go ahead. And we already got some action over there. So he's wanted. What about this other guy? He won't be. He is a type 6. So, for, uh, especially the targets like the, um, this Asp Explorer here, uh, they're fairly resilient in the hull. So I always go for the power plants. Uh, the only ships I don't are the smaller ones such as Eagles and Cobra Mark 3s because normally they're dead by the time their power plant gets destroyed. So we're within two kilometers, we'll go ahead and start to scan, get in position, and we'll start to beat the crap out of them. There we go, scan is done. And you'll see the, the maneuverability of this ship is just absolutely fantastic in these zones. Like this guy has no chance whatsoever to get me off his tail. And his power plant is toast. Reverse a little bit here. And you can see, um, with four pips into weapons, the power plant, or my power distributor, pardon me, can keep up rather well. You can maintain your fire for a long time before having to recharge. Where is everybody? There's one. Let's see what this guy is. Looks like a clipper. These ones are a little tricky. I find the clippers very, very maneuverable. 
So it is a little bit harder to stick on their tail. Again, subsystems, power plant. And I normally sit here, because uh, they're going to scan me, but I'm going to scan them. Scan detected. And once they, because I have no cargo, they'll scan me, find I have nothing, and then they'll leave, and then it kind of allows me to get on their tail. So there we go. Nothing worth his time here, so he's going to turn to go away. Allows me to drop in on his scan butt. Detected. Four pips to weapons. Make sure we stay close. His shields are down. He does have turreted weapons, so he is getting a few shots on me, but I am not too worried. It's only, I think, two lasers, it looks like. And we're going to punish his power plant. And that's where these uh, large hardpoints are absolutely fantastic for taking out power plants. They just pound through any hull in the game. And he's toast. Just like that. Come on. There we go. Boom. Target destroyed. Put a few pips back into my systems just to recharge it so my shield charge again because I took a couple shots. Nothing too concerning though. I think that's, yeah, that's the, ooh, nope, I thought that was the, uh, the transporter. This guy's pretty clean because he looks like he's mining, yep. And so this ship, again, the thrusters are absolutely fantastic. You can throw this ship around, such, so you watch this asteroid. I mean, you can absolutely toss this ship around. And it just, you can stick on any target's butt if you want. It responds very well. Roll out. I think I've seen some combat over here. Oh, there we go. Go for the big boys. He is wanted. Fantastic. Target is power plant. We're closing in. So again, shifting all my uh, uh, power distributors, so I put four pips into weapons, two into engine. That's kind of my standard. Woo! What a jerk. It's my standard combat configuration until I start to actually take some damage. So we'll start to scan each other. He will find out that I don't have any cargo, and he will turn to fly away. And that's when we strike. So kill warrant scan is done, get ourselves closer, he pops chaff, not a problem. He's a very big target, so even with chaff, I'm hitting just about every shot when you're this close. So again, he has some turreted weapons, but I'm not too concerned. And there's the beauty of these large hard points. His shields are already down, and I am absolutely destroying his power plant. Roll ourselves around. The power plant uh, on these ships is very vulnerable from the top or the bottom. And he's dead. He just doesn't know it yet. His power plant is out, so he's lost all power to his ship. And now we can just cruise right in. Get right down on top of him. Whoops. If I can learn how to fly here. There we go. Hurry up and die. Boom! 210,000 credits. Nice. Oh, this is going to be fun. So for eagles, they're laughable in this ship. And if you want to run into me, buddy, that's fine. Just less shields I have to deal with. So these ships are... Eagles are a cakewalk. I've taken on a wing of five eagles and my shields never got dropped. 
get back on him, finish our scan. So his shields are down. That only took about half of my capacitor charge for weapons. A federal dropship over here, we'll go check him out. Four pips into engines just to recharge it a little bit faster, so we're up and ready to go. Get our scan done. Oops, wrong one. Go ahead to subsystems. We're going to target his power plant again. So he's engaged the uh, the transport, which is great. His attention is divided. Hello. Shields are already down. So again, trying to get turned on me. That's not a problem with this ship. We just boost ourselves and get out of his line of fire again. So as you can see, the maneuverability on this ship is absolutely fantastic. The pitch rate on a Federal dropship is pretty decent. Uh, that and the Assault ship both have really good um, turning rates. And we're going to bump a little bit, that's fine. Target destroyed. So again, four pips into shields, two into engines while I look for the next target. Just allows my shields to regenerate the little bit of uh, strength that they lost while fighting that guy, because again, he did get a couple shots on us with cannons that were turreted. And just start throwing the ship around. Feels absolutely fantastic flying this ship. We got somebody over there. That's why I like my um, higher rated sensors. It just increases my uh, the range I can pick things up. There's an assault ship. Now these ones I know can turn really good, so they're a little bit trickier to fight, but still shouldn't be too big of an issue. Get ourselves a bit closer. Scan detected. So get on him. His attention is somewhere else. So we'll start attacking him even before his uh, our kill warrant scan is done. And it is done now. Shields are down already. And there's that pitch rate I was telling you about with the uh, the Federal Assault Ship and the Federal Drop Ship. So they are a little bit trickier, but that's fine once we get back behind them again. This is probably uh, the trickiest ship to fight, is these assault ships, just because they can turn like that. Their maneuverability is not good, but their pitch rate is absolutely fantastic. So they're a little bit harder to keep away from you. And we're going to bump again, that's fine. And he's dead. Target destroyed. Adjust some power, recharge our shields while we look for the next victim. Oh, we got an Asp Explorer. Throw our ship around. He's clean. Now 
And that Viper is wanted. He looks like this uh, transport is going to absolutely own him, but we'll see if we can't get a couple shots in. I don't think I'm going to finish my scan. Oh, I got it just in time. So that, that Type 9 Heavy was just absolutely owning that uh, Vault or that uh, Viper. There's this next guy. He is a miner. Loop back around. I think this is just a bunch of minerals this miner has managed to get out of that asteroid. So what do we got coming over here? Ooh, looks like we got a wing. So we have a python. So it is a wing of three. We'll kind of see what's going on here. A Cobra Mark three. And another Cobra Mark three. So we're going to wait and see if they engage this uh, Type 9 Heavy. If they do, we will go ahead and do our thing. And what I do, so if they're going to, I switch over my fire group so I have my chaff out. Yep, and they're going for him. And there, so somebody's on us, so we're going to go ahead and pop chaff. He's dead. So yes, yeah, the other um, viper that's on us, so that's not an issue. Pop another chaff. Now the Python is all by himself. We're going to target his power plant. I'm just going to switch back over to my kill warrant scanner because I don't need chaff for just one enemy. Oh, and he managed to destroy the Type 9 Heavy, but he did his job for us, which was to distract him while we took out his buddies. Very mercenary of me, but that's perfectly fine. That's my job. So you can see the damage I'm doing to his power plant here. I mean, we already have him down to 30%. And in one capacitor charge, we have essentially destroyed a Python. So we knocked his shields down, and we killed his power plant within one capacitor charge for our weapons. Did you hurry up and blow up? There we go. Just like that. He's dead. So we'll recharge our shields while we search for somebody else. Looks like we got a exhaust trail over here somewhere. Uh, maybe not. Alright, doesn't look like there's anything else here. 
Unless one of these guys wants to play. I think that guy was the miner. Yes, he is. All right. So we're going to go ahead, retract our hard points, and we'll head back to the starport. Turn in our findings. Our, our earnings, I should say. And then uh, finish off this episode. So I will see you guys. Oh, come on, uh, mass lock. I will see you guys once I get back to the station. Alright, so here we are back at the station. I'll go ahead and just kind of show you guys as I land. Oop, we want contacts. It is fairly simple to land in this ship because of its maneuverability. And hopefully now that I said that, I don't absolutely embarrass myself and crash into the wall. Wouldn't be the first time. So we're looking for pad 36, which is right there. Oh, this thing handles like a dream. Landing gear deployed. Just uh, bump my hard point button by mistake. They were deployed. And just like that, we are here. So really easy to dock these ships. So that is the Vulture in a nutshell, at least for the uh, loadout I'm going for, which is bounty hunting and conflict zones. So it is well worth the money if you want to go ahead and get yourself one. If you're planning on doing any kind of combat or bounty hunting, such as I'm doing, uh, it is the ship to get on your way up. You'll have this ship probably upwards until you get to your maybe the Python or even the Anaconda. Uh, anyway, you'll have it until you go to the higher tier ships and even then you'll probably want to come back and fly this one a little bit more because it is so much damn fun so thank you everybody for watching and i hope you enjoyed this uh video if you did please leave a like and a comment if you want to see another ship review or something else within elite dangerous uh, again, just in the comments, throw me a note, and I will see what I can do about it. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video.